The sermon for the uh, second week of Epiphany is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The sermon is entitled, The Abundant Sign. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, weddings and celebrations, get-togethers, always a joyous occasion as family and friends come together for a great time and fellowship with great food and drink, song, and even some dance. But as you know, before that party and that feast and that wedding, there is much to prepare for. Um, much to prepare so that there is no problems and that this party can go off with a hitch. So as we do, we, we clean the house and we dust the shelves and we put everything where they should have been probably last year. <laughs> we dust, clean the house, and we go to the store, buy all the decorations, refreshments, food and drink. And if 100 people were to attend, we usually plan for around 150 just in case we do not run out of something. Because the last thing we want to do is be left with that horrible nightmare of running out of food or drink for all of the guests. Not only would it feel like we had dropped the ball, but it would be a feeling of utter embarrassment. As a host of a party, we have let down those who have come to enjoy this time together. And likewise, we see in our gospel texts a similar blunder. They have no wine the mother of Jesus said. Now, this wasn't just an afternoon of celebration, but in Jewish custom, this was a celebration that went up to seven days. So when you think about running out of something, this wasn't just a little hiccup like oops, right? This was more than a blip on the radar. This was a great embarrassment. They were empty. And they needed to be full again. It reminds me of uh, the parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 18. Jesus said, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Jesus told, and then he told a parable about a man who went out with his covetous heart, desiring a place to store his crops. You know the story. He tore down the barns to make bigger barns. So that this man, his soul could rest in his possessions to say, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat and drink and be merry. We all need fullness. The wedding at Cana, they needed it. This parable of the rich fool, that man needed it as well. But the key is, where do we find it? Where is it given? The world says, find it not in God, but search for these things in man. We saw it in the children's message that we pile and pile and pile and pile more things in our life, thinking that it will give us, in that abundance of wealth and possessions, will give us the fullness that we are searching for. This is what the world is preaching to us. Fullness that will complete the heart and mind. Fullness that will bring peace in one's life. Fullness that will indeed exude that picture of eating, drinking, and being merry the days on end without any worries in sight. Isn't that the great quest, or even better yet, the great temptation? We're all trying to fill something in our lives. Don't you see it in your own life? Is there something in your life that you're trying to fill apart from the Word of God? What is it? What is it? Adam and Eve, we know what that was. They had complete fullness. 
Yet it was that devil's word that tempted them to seek that fullness apart from God, turning from the focus on God and turning to the focus to themselves, from God to the tree where they saw, they perceived what was good to their own eyes. And this original sin brought great separation, this great tragic chasm to this world. Sin and death, spiritual darkness, blind, blindness, and this void coming as an anchor into this humanity that we live in today. This is the spiritual condition that we live in. It is in this void where man tries to fill his cup with so many different things. Believing that if they just have enough, they just pile, 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 and they reach to that brim, that abundance of things, then they will have the life. But the thing is, that the, the curious thing for me is, we live in the States, right? We have so many things, don't we? I mean, we live in abundance. We have everything that we have here in daily bread, everything at a click of a button or an order through a drive-thru. Actually, you shouldn't eat too much fast food. <laughs> That's my problem. But the point is, is that we have all these things in life, but yet why do we still struggle? The more we have, it seems like the more empty we have become, isn't it? Don't you see that? In a world that we live in today, we look at Hollywood, we look at all the rich and famous of this world, yet we see too, they too are struggling, right? If it was all about possessions, all about things, why are the richest people of the world still trying to find the answer to their problem? Something is missing, running on empty. We might go to the world for that lack, all of us. We look at a troubled circumstance that we're in, all the suffering and the stress and in the anxiety that we face. It envelops us so much that we go to that dark place as if we are empty and not full. As I told the children this morning, you are full. Because you are, Jesus has given you his promise. But the devil says, you are missing something. You need more than what God has given you. You need more than the death and resurrection of Christ. You need more than what your baptism and the Lord's Supper gives to you. That is, you need more than forgiveness, life, and salvation. As if there is more to life than God and his word. The season of Epiphany. It is this day that Jesus reveals the fullness that he brings. With a wedding and no wine, emptiness, a feast filled with no answers, we hear the words of Jesus' mother. Do you see that in that text today? She says, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. In other words, she is saying, this is Jesus. <laughs> this is the Savior of the world, the Word made flesh. This is God, and in Him all things are possible because Jesus is our assurance. He is our certainty and where our faith resides. The mother of Jesus was saying, listen to Him. He is truly the master of the feast. He is the salvation of all the world. He is from the star to his baptism and now the first of many signs. He is our Lord. The Lord that gives us fullness. And Jesus says what? Fill the jars with water. Six stone water jars were there, as we know these jars were used for ceremonial washing. It is with these jars filled to the brim that he turns water into wine. On the surface, yes, of course, we see a great miracle. Water to wine, how could that be? 
Not only just any wine, but a good wine, a great wine, a new wine, an abundant supply of wine upwards to 180 gallons of great wine. Not just a little bit for everyone, but an outpouring, an abundance, a new sign that shows that Jesus gives not only a little, but the abundant life. Do whatever he tells you. Because Jesus' word, his command, his promise, his life is abundant above all things. We know this, but how we lack in trusting and fearing and loving God above all things, don't we? How we can take for granted the power of prayer that he gives to us as a gift. Rather than going to prayer, we go to the advice of the world. Rather than going to the word and dwelling in the word, we would rather dwell in the world. Rather than living in this sacramental life, this baptismal life and the eating Sunday after Sunday, the sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins, we would rather feed on everything else of this world. Fullness. Where is that found in your life? I think for all of us here, it is a time for repentance. Because we all have that one thing. One thing that just says, you know, if I just had a little bit more of that, wow, my life would be perfect. But today Jesus comes. He comes to you. To fulfill you with those words, do whatever he tells you, because there Jesus follows through. He follows through with these early signs, the guests that were empty without this wine. There he shows you the great miracle, the first of the signs, with this water turning into the wine. But even better yet, this is Jesus. That is what he is saying. This is your Lord who has come to be the Savior of the nations. No lip service, no hypocrisy, but by His faithfulness, He follows through. Do whatever He tells you because this is Jesus. And there He turns these purification jars full of water into wine. Purity from the old to the new. Jesus is here to show them and to show you that the sign of the time is changing because this abundance is here, a sneak peek of what was to come. Woman, why does this have to do with me, Jesus says? My hour has not yet come. The hour has not yet come. Don't you see? The abundance at the wedding at Cana is a sneak peek for the true reason why he has come to this world. To give you the abundant life. From the wedding at Cana to the hour that was drawing near, my hour, Jesus says, my hour that is the crucifixion, Jesus Christ, our bridegroom, who goes to the cross at his faithful hour to the Father's will, who sent him, there our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, dies for the bride, the church. The most gracious picture of what a wedding looks like. Jesus dying for you. Filling you by his body and blood. From empty to full, the sign of ab abundance accomplished for you at the crucifixion. The Savior that sees your emptiness, that is a separation from God. There He comes to be your reconciler, standing in your place, dying the big death, so that you may have true abundance that is not short-lived, but that is eternal and true. And He finishes it for you. Death has lost its sting. Guilt has been accounted for by Christ, your sins paid and purchased all by the body and blood of Jesus. Forgiveness of sins. Though we may tell ourselves that we are lacking many things in this life, 
The word says you are not. You are full. You have the abundant life. This new life that is the body and blood of Jesus who turns you from death to life. Even through all the suffering and the anxiety that you might face, there Jesus is to show you the peace that the world cannot give. Though the devil may attack and, 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 and assault you in every different way, there it doesn't change the fact Do whatever he tells you because the word is true. The word follows through because Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And what a blessing that is to know through all things we are full. The body and blood of our Lord at this altar. Jesus gives his true body and blood Filling and feeding us, giving the abundant gift of his very own body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. What a gracious feast we are at Sunday after Sunday, receiving the word of God, receiving the gift of absolution, receiving the supper of our Lord, a place where we are made full There's no other place to be. For who can give us the abundance that delivers you the keys to eternal life? Who can feed you the gifts that make you full, knowing that you have the great assurance that your sins are forgiven, cleansed by the very words of Christ? Who can give you the great joy knowing that your ultimate gift is that faith? that you are a child of God, a citizen of heaven, which has no end. This is the life. You have Jesus. And like Jesus, his mother said again, do whatever he tells you, because he is Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. You have eternal life. Death has lost its sting. Jesus follows through all by his death. And three days later, there he rises. Do whatever he tells you. Because Jesus is God. He is your abundance. He is what makes you full. All by his work in his death and resurrection. And thus we go on with our week. Not alone, not empty. But we go full in faith. Lavished by his grace, Jesus fills the void by dying and rising for you. And now, every step of the way, God is with you. For Jesus has made you this, and he has given you this abundant life. From water to wine, to the death upon the cross and the empty tomb, to your baptism and the supper of our Lord, in this faith you are full knowing that God is with you. He never leaves nor forsakes you, but he will be with you until the end of the age. Go now in peace. Go now in his fullness. Go now in the abundant life that the Lord gives through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Sunday Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.